Welcome back, I'm Matt Chemist. In today's video, we're going to be discussing umami chemicals and deciding which umami chemical is the true king of flavor. In our previous tier list, we explored different kinds of bitter chemicals and artificial sweeteners. Now we move on to the third taste, umami, otherwise known as savoriness. Umami chemicals consist of glutamates and nucleotides, which are widely present in broths for soups and stews, which respond to taste receptors. Like bitter and sweet chemicals, umami chemicals utilize G-protein coupled receptors similarly. Umami is perceived in the body by a heterodimeric G-protein coupled receptor, comprised of proteins T1R1 and T1R3. Interestingly, T1R3 is related and is common to perceiving sweet tasting chemicals. Regardless, the mechanism is similar to most GPCRs, with an umami taste and binding to the T1R3 receptor, which initiates a signal transduction cascade, resulting in an increase in intracellular calcium concentration and ending with the perception of umami flavor. Unlike the four basic tastes, umami was not well documented until the 20th century, when it was proposed to exist in 1908 by the Japanese biochemist Kikune Ikeda, and was recognized to describe the taste of glutamates and nucleotides in 1908. Since glutamates and nucleotides serve as the building blocks for both proteins and nucleic acids respectively, it's important to recognize and perceive them in the body. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot has actually sponsored the channel two times previously, and I've been quite pleased with the products that they've sent me. While savory foods bring a lot of comfort, it's even more comfortable to eat savory foods off of a desk which raises and lowers to whatever height you wish to eat at. I've been using the E7 Pro Premium Standing Desk from FlexiSpot to eat every meal at home since their desk arrived. It was simple to assemble, and they even included this FlexiSpot branded Allen wrench, which looks great and made the job of assembly simple. I especially appreciate the 440 pound weight capacity that the E7 Pro has, as that packs quite a punch. It also raises to an astounding height of 50.6 inches and can go as low as 25 inches. They offer this desk in different sizes, but I got one of their smaller desks so that it would fit well with my sofa. It raises quickly enough that you're able to get the desk to whatever your desired height is without having to wait for a millennium. If you decide that you don't want the whole desk and you just want the frame, you can buy just the frame on their own and attach them to your own desk. I use this with my sofa so that I can be comfortable and use my computer at different heights depending on what activities I'm doing. For my workflow, especially during content creation, having a desk like this right at my sofa makes it a lot easier to do work. So thanks FlexiSpot for making it easier for me to make videos. You can use the link in the video description to get your very own E7 Pro Premium standing desk. I want to thank FlexiSpot for their support of this channel. In this video, we'll be ranking several umami chemicals, starting with monosodium glutamate, the sodium salt of the amino acid glutamate, one of the 21 amino acids that is characterized by a carboxylate R group. Imagine aspartate, but its R group has one more carbon. It's found naturally in foods such as tomatoes and cheese, and is often used in cooking as a natural flavor enhancer. According to Uncle Roger, it's the king of flavor. MSG, how can you miss the king of flavor? MSG was first prepared by Ikeda in 1908, who tried to isolate and replicate the taste of kombu, an edible seaweed used in broth in Japanese cuisine. I absolutely love ramen. The taste of ramen is delicious. If you haven't tried ramen before, you definitely need to try ramen. The umami taste of ramen is just one of the parts that make it so delicious. MSG is often used and found in stocks, in ramen, gravy, stews, soups, and more. The synthesis of glutamate is catalyzed in the body via transaminase enzymes from its alpha-ketoacid counterpart, alpha-ketoglutarate. It's also produced via glutamine by the enzyme glutaminase. Like glycine, glutamate functions as a neurotransmitter. However, it's an excitatory neurotransmitter and is the most abundant neurotransmitter in the nervous system of vertebrates. Glutamate and its constituents are natural components of many aged or fermented foods such as cheese, soy sauce, and bean pastes. Bean pastes are also one of the best tasting things in the world in my opinion. If you ever have a good Korean restaurant to go to, try yourself some bean paste. While being regarded as safe to eat by the FDA, there is a misconception that MSG is known to cause headaches and discomfort, known as Chinese restaurant syndrome. However, studies show that there are no such effects when MSG is added to foods at normal concentrations. There are some people who tend to respond negatively to large amounts of MSG in food still, but this is something specific to those people. So for the majority of people, there's no concern with eating MSG, but there are some people who might respond negatively to it, just like there's some people who respond negatively to basically anything. So that's the background on MSG, but how does MSG actually taste? 
We're going to be putting it on some McDonald's french fries, because who doesn't love some french fries? It's definitely salty. It's an improvement to the regular McDonald's french fry. If I had to rank it, I'd probably put it into, like, A tier, where a regular McDonald's french fry is probably, like, a B tier. Next, we have disodium inosinate and disodium guanolate. Disodium inosinate is the disodium salt of the purine nucleotide inosine monophosphate, also known as IMP. IMP is, in turn, used as a precursor for AMP and GMP, also known as adenosine monophosphate and guanosine monophosphate, nucleotides that are both important for regulation and are building blocks for energy sources such as ATP and GTP, adenosine triphosphate, and guanosine triphosphate. The synthesis of IMP is both long and complex, like with most biological pathways, starting with PRPP, 5-phosphoribosyl-1-pyrophosphate, and eventually synthesizing the purine ring through successive steps of phosphorylation and nucleophilic displacement. Alongside disodium inosinate is disodium guanolate, which is the natural sodium salt of guanosine monophosphate, GMP. Together with disodium inosinate, they are added to foods as flavor enhancers, known as disodium 5 prime nucleotides, or food additive E635. They are the flavor enhancer dream team. Disodium inosinate is found at levels of 80 to 800 mg per 100 grams of meat or fish. It's also made through fermentation of sugars such as tapioca starch. Disodium guanolate is also produced via fermentation of D-glucose. You might find these two ingredients added to foods such as potato chips, crackers, sauces, and snacks. These compounds are known to tremendously enhance umami flavor, a mixture that is known to contain 98% MSG and 2% E635 is found to have four times the flavor enhancing power compared to MSG alone. Let's put that theory to the test. First we'll start with the inosinate. I actually really like the taste of this one. This tastes significantly better than the MSG does, but that might just be because there's already some MSG in a McDonald's french fry. The taste of MSG lasted longer on its own. This one faded relatively quickly. So I'm going to put it in B tier because it goes away pretty quick, but it's like really good. It just goes away. Let's see how the sodium guanolate tastes. I'm going to put it on another french fry so that we don't get any cross-contamination. Not quite as intense as the sodium inosinate, still pretty good. I'd probably put this one into C tier though, because it's not quite as potent. While MSG tasted pretty good on its own on a french fry, supposedly it's supposed to taste four times as good with the inosine and the guanosine. So why don't we try using a combination, which I'll call enhanced MSG. It's enhanced all right, wow. I would say that that's like a solid S tier. That's like significantly better than MSG on its own. And you don't get the same lingering taste that you did before. We have made MSG taste whole. It's almost like the people who made this before knew what they were doing. Right into S tier. S for sheesh. Up next we have glycine, which is the simplest of the 21 amino acids. It's also the only amino acid which is achiral. When we say that it's achiral, it just means that it's a molecule that lacks chirality, which just means that something doesn't have a unique mirror image. It's also important for the synthesis of purine nucleotides, as it contributes two carbons and one nitrogen atom to the purine ring. Along with proline, glycine is known as a breaker of alpha helices in the secondary structure of proteins. Due to its small R group, this makes it flexible and will introduce kinks in the helix, increasing the energy of the helix and making it unfavorable to form such a helix. Glycine is also known to act as an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord. It's also an essential component in lab research as it's used to promote protein-labeled antibodies from western blotting membranes. The last thing of note is that glycine is also used as a flavor enhancer and is known for a slightly umami flavor, though its taste is mainly sweet. Let's give glycine a taste. Will it taste savory? Will it taste sweet? Let's see. Tastes sweet. Tastes like I just put sugar on a french fry. It's really good though. The sweet is way stronger than the umami, but it tastes like S tier. I would put glycine on a french fry every day of the week. That's amazing. Glycine, you can go into S tier, but S for sweet as well. Another amino acid of note is aspartate, another one of the 21 amino acids characterized by a carboxylate containing R group. It's synthesized in the body by transaminase enzymes from oxaloacetate, its alpha ketoacid counterpart. 
Aspartate serves as a precursor to other important amino acids such as methionine, threonine, isoleucine, lysine, and asparagine. It, along with serine and histidine, is part of the catalytic triad present in serine proteases. Its role is to help orient the histidine residue and neutralize the charge that develops on the histidine during transition states. Aspartate is chemically like glutamate, so it can act as a flavor enhancer, allowing for an umami flavor. It, along with glutamate, is essential in tomatoes, which are naturally umami boosters in cooking. Let's see how aspartate tastes. Let's see how it goes. It's pretty sour. Very sour. Might be slightly umami, but it's like mostly just sour. I'm gonna say aspartic acid can go into like D tier, because if it is savory, it's like barely there. D for don't put this if you want savory. Cysteine is an amino acid that I'm dreading tasting. It's another one of the 21 amino acids, but it's the last one, I swear, that is characterized by a sulfhydryl R group. Chemists normally call a sulfhydryl group a thiol. Cysteine is synthesized from serine and homocysteine via the enzyme cystathionine gamma lyase. Cysteine is an important protein component as it makes up the disulfide bridges in protein tertiary structures. For instance, this disulfide linkage is important in antibodies, where the two main subunits are connected through disulfide bonds. These sorts of disulfide linkages can actually be leveraged to produce DACs, drug antibody conjugates, which are an emerging therapy to target diseases. While cysteine itself is not umami, it's used in enhancing umami flavors when reacting with other compounds. For example, cysteine may react with reducing sugars during the Maillard reaction for the preparation of meats and may be used to enhance the perception of umami. One example of the Maillard reaction is in the preparation of black garlic. The process of preparing black garlic involves the very slow, gentle heating of garlic over an extended amount of time, which gradually makes the garlic turn black, as you might have guessed. The resulting black garlic is known for having a super intense taste, which is exactly what you'd expect from the Maillard reaction. With that said, let's see if cysteine tastes as bad as I remember. You might be wondering why I'm wearing this gold shirt, and it's because I'm the host of this video, and you're gonna see your host suffer today, because we actually tasted some amino acids previously. We even tasted them on McDonald's french fries. And unfortunately, because we're doing this umami video, I have to taste cysteine again. Cysteine is one of the worst tasting amino acids in my opinion, and it's not gonna be great. Cysteine is supposed to taste like rotten eggs. So I'm gonna have to put this on sparingly. It's also got these big chunky crystals. I'm gonna have to crunch it up with my teeth. Ugh, why am I doing this? This is gonna be so bad. Oh my goodness, I hate this. Okay. I'm not doing this for your entertainment. I'm doing this for your education. So I hope you learned something in this video because all I learned is I probably don't wanna eat cysteine ever again. This is why you need to subscribe. <laughs> It's so bad. Is it savory? Very slightly. It's so bad. It's like acidic. <laughs> My body is retching. I almost threw up, but not quite. <laughs> Don't cook with cysteine. Oh, that's bad. Oh, my mouth. We're going to need to take a break before we record the rest of these. Oh, my gosh. Interestingly, it kind of tastes like meat, but then it tastes like burnt hair, and then it's not in your mouth anymore because you want to throw up as quickly as possible. Don't try eating cysteine, please. It's not worth it. Now that we're done with the amino acids, let's talk about a diacid, succinic acid, or more specifically, sodium succinate. Disodium succinate is the disodium salt of succinic acid, which is a dicarboxylic acid. That is an important part of the citric acid cycle. In the citric acid cycle, it's produced by the enzyme succinyl-CoA synthetase. Succinate is known for giving shellfish its distinctive taste and has been identified as a possible umami compound. As a food additive, succinate is known to be a regulator of acidity and it contributes a somewhat sour component to umami taste. Beside its role as a food additive, succinate has a greater role in the human body, as metabolic signaling of succinate is involved in inflammation and is one of the three metabolites that are hallmarks in human cancers and tumors. Let's see if succinate sucks or not. And if it sucks, I hope it doesn't suck a lot. I've never tasted succinic acid before, so I'm a little bit excited to see what this one's like. Especially if it's used in the citric acid cycle, maybe your body is like, oh, this tastes amazing. Ah, oh, that's very sour. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's sour. Is it umami? Yeah, it's a bit umami. Mostly sour, but it does have a bit of a umami undertone. For aspartic acid, it's pretty sour. Savory-wise, it's probably like a D tier. I wouldn't recommend using this in your cooking, but it might be something interesting to try out if you're looking for a sour touch in a dish.
The last chemical of note for this tier list is calcium caseinate. Calcium caseinate is one of several milk proteins derived from casein in skim milk. It's produced by precipitating the casein from skim milk using acid and then neutralizing it with calcium hydroxide. Calcium caseinate is known for having a papery, overall bland flavor. It's primarily used in meal preparation and fat breakdown. Calcium caseinate also plays an important role in muscle growth, as caseinate use has been demonstrated to have higher muscle weight gain and less fat weight gain compared to both soy and whey. In addition, calcium caseinate has been shown to lower the levels of serum triacylglycerol for those with hypertension. So let's see how it actually tastes. Kind of like cheesy. Yeah, it is umami. Not like super umami. I'd probably say it's like a C tier, but it was a little bit better than disodium guanolate. Goes away pretty quickly. I think with a French fry, it's not too bad. So I think C tier is fair. C for calcium caseinate. Since the enhanced MSG and glycine were so delicious, the natural thing we have to try as a scientist is combine the two of them. Make sure we get a whole bunch on the fries. Wow. That is like S plus plus. Glycine with enhanced MSG? Highly recommend. In fact, I'll even get my wife in here, Mrs. Chemist, so that she can provide her own opinion. This is enhanced MSG and glycine. Is it good? How does it taste? Does it taste umami? Does it taste savory? Um, sweet. So there you have it, folks. If you think this video is sweet, make sure you subscribe. FlexiSpot provides all kinds of standing desks and ergonomic chairs to meet your needs. If you want a standing desk with a T-frame, you can check out their E7 basic frame. If you're on a budget, you can choose their E2 model, which only costs $150. For that, you can get the basic standing function. You can use my promo code 24BDYTB30 for $30 off on orders over $500. Make sure you use the link in the video description so that FlexiSpot knows you came from here. I want to thank FlexiSpot for their support of this channel. So what have we learned? We've learned more about umami and how umami chemicals are perceived in the body. We also ranked several umami chemicals, from the king of flavor MSG to the disodium inosinate and guanolate dream team. What do you think of our rankings? Did we hit the mark? Or do you have umami favorites that you think deserve a higher spot? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more savory chemistry videos. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. You know what, David? You were right. <laughs> uh... Not quite as intense as the sodium inosinate, 